talk to me about a debate that you're leading in the Commons and what you're calling for. Well, thank you, Kay, for giving me the opportunity to talk about the detention of people with autism and learning disabilities under the Mental Health Act. Uh, there's still about 2,000 people, 200 of which are children, who are being detained uh, in our system uh, by using uh, um, a piece of legislation that's now the thick end of 40 years of age. These are people who actually don't in many instances have what I think we would regard as a mental health condition. They, are, they have a lifelong condition, most notably autism. Uh, and in recent weeks, we've heard some really harrowing cases. Tony Hickman's case well, has been reported widely in the media, and Patient A, as well, another uh, concerning case about uh, people who are being detained in many cases for many, many years, you know, 5, 10, 15, even 20 years, in detention and confinement, away from their families, with uh, a very poor quality of life and it seems to me in 2022 we shouldn't be uh, accepting the sort of conditions that um, we thought we'd um, uh, got rid of a generation ago and, and I think it's vital that uh, I uh, raise these issues in the House of Commons with the government to press them to implement the policy that they themselves have agreed on, which is to move away from this, frankly, rather barbaric practice uh, and to do more to give support to people in the community where they belong, uh, rather than being detained under a, a very old piece of law that needs reform. But now is the time for action, and I'm going to be pushing the government to get on with the job, not just of law reform, but actually of increasing and improving community facilities across the country. We need the health service and our social care services to help step up here to end this, uh, uh, frankly, barbaric practice. The average length of stay is five years for somebody that's autistic. So we're talking about somebody that just experiences the world differently. You know, I'm not sick. I'm not broken. I don't need to be treated. We don't need to be treated. Uh, we certainly don't need to be caged and subject to the to sort of inhumane um, and degrading treatment. But that's far too often what's happening. Um, and as you said, there's 2,000 people still detained in hospital. And it's always a worry that I have, you know, that there is no community support um, and so often what happens, which which happened in my case, is something that's a social event happens, like um, my brother died and I had a baby, you know, two very ordinary things that, that might happen to people. And I simply needed a bit of occupational therapy, a bit of speech and language and, and some psychotherapy. Might have cost the taxpayer, you know, £5,000. But what happened instead of getting that support was that um, I was sent to a, a, a hospital, you know, one of them was hundreds of miles away from my home. My, I was handcuffed, my legs were tied together, I was put into a cage. The car looked like, you know, a, a dog van. Um, I was driven to a hospital and then I was just subject to routine restraint, seclusion and segregation. And your viewers might be thinking, well, gosh, well, she must have been, you know, um, sort of, you know, very distressed and, and upset and angry. And that's that's exactly right. And, and I think what happens for autistic people is most people in the public know we need routine, we need structure, we need predictability, we need familiarity. And of course, psychiatric hospitals are the exact opposite of that. So in themselves, they exacerbate the more troubling features of autism, which causes us to feel distress, which results in restraint, which results in seclusion, and which results in, in long-term segregation. So I don't think we can call these hospitals, these specialist hospitals, supportive. I, I had to escape. So I, I, I um, took a, a boat to France and I, I flew into uh, Dubai and then into Lagos um, in Nigeria. And from there, you know, that that's how I rebuilt my life. And, you know, the interesting thing is that as soon as I left, you know, um, I wasn't suffering the sensory overload. I wasn't suffering the cognitive overload. You know, I made my environment familiar and I was fine and working again um, as a teacher in a prestigious British curriculum school within six weeks of my escape. And they had sectioned me for a further year. So although, you know, my, my case, uh, it, it might seem extreme, it really isn't extreme. It's really actually the norm. A social event occurs.
no supports given in the community and we're locked up in these these institutions and you know many of us don't get out tony hickmont 20 plus years you know patient a you know in a long-term segregation suite i was in one of those i had a mattress on the floor i was fed on the floor my food was cold because it took four hours to get to me because you know because of staff changeovers they're really not befitting this treatment of of a, of a civilized society